all right, and keep adding on to my Taylor or my McLaurin series without ever stopping. This symbolizes that. Now, is there a way that we could actually come up with the actual sum related to something like that? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, all right? But right now, it's the act of coming up with a Taylor series. Find a Taylor series for f of x equals e to the 5x centered at x equals 2. Uh, I'm sorry, c equals 2. So I'm going to need some derivatives. So let me do f prime of x. It's going to be 5e to the 5x. Then f prime, a oh, double prime of x is going to be 25e to the 5x, because we're going to multiply by 5, but I'm going to write that as 5 squared e to the 5x. The third derivative of x would be 5 to the third just multiplying again by a 5, e to the 5x. And so there ends up being a relationship, a seeming relationship, between what derivative we're taking, in this case the third derivative, and the power of 5. And fortunately for us, that e part of it is, is never changing. Okay. Part of it, whenever you take a derivative involving exponential e, Part of it is always going to have the same exponential e in it, right? So it's a matter of trying to see what else, what else is the company, right? So I need the derivative now specifically at the c value of 2, all right? But again, all I would really care about is the last one because following this progression, I would get f to the nth, so again, the nth derivative of f of x which would be 5 to the nth e to the 5x. But then specifically, I want that when c is equal to 2. All right. So you look at your Taylor series model, and you see you have the nth derivative at the c value. So I'm going to figure out the nth derivative at 2, which would be 5 to the n, e to the 10th power, all right, because I'm swapping out the x for a 2. That's the hard part. Because again, all, all, all this question is asking us to do is come up with a Taylor series that represents the same model, all right? So following the form, we have n, e, n equals 0 on the bottom, infinity, f to the nth, again, nth derivative of f at c would be this, 5 to the nth, e to the 10th power, over n factorial, times x minus c, but c is 2, so x minus 2 to the nth power. This one? Yeah, that, that's just establishing that it's not a power. As best they could do with notation. Uh, plug into two for us. So, give the first four non zero terms. All right. So, start off plugging into zero and see what you get. All right. So, you're looking at if I plug into zero, anything that's got a power of n is going to go to a one. And zero factorial, surprisingly, is actually just just a one. Yeah, zero factorial is equal to one. Oh, you want to know why? I 
as proofs go, this is the short one. All right, so n factorial is by definition n times n minus 1 factorial. All right, that's one. I mean, there's many definitions, but that's, that's the most popular one because it illustrates that you're always multiplying by one less than the factor that you're at. All right. I mean, another one would be to say n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 dot 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 n minus n plus 1. So that's just something. Okay. So what I'm looking for is 0 factorial. If I put in a 0 for n here, I get a negative 1 factorial. That, that doesn't make sense. You can't have a negative factorial. All right. But what I can do is figure out what 1 factorial would be. So I'm replacing every n with a 1. Uh, replacing every n with a 1. So on the left hand side we have a 1 factorial. On the right hand side I have 1 times 0 factorial. So 0 factorial. So it's telling me that whatever 0 factorial is, it's going to be the same as 1 factorial. We know that 1 factorial is equal to 1, so therefore 0 factorial has to be equal to 1. Yeah, but that's actually the proof. Now, the, the more understandable, commonplace, like real life way, is if you think of a factorial as a numerical measurement for an arrangement, a zero factorial is basically saying, how many ways can you arrange nothing? I can do that one way. There's a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> now, if you were to say, okay, show me more nothing. You're like, all right, this, this is getting weird. Like, I don't want to talk about this anymore, you know? So, like, that, that's really what it is. It's kind of like grouping, like, if I have five people, like, how many ways can I put all five people in a group of five? Well, there's one way to do it. Now, how many ways can I take all five of those people and put them in a group of zero? Well, there's one way to do that, too. I just don't put them in a group. Five. Yeah, but it's also, I mean, it's, it's kind of a philosophical conundrum. And that, that's the case with probability and statistics, because when you have something like that, where it's like, all right, I have five people and I want to put them in a group of none. All right, so the only way to do that is to keep them right where they are as a group of five. So putting five people in a single group of five would be the same mathematically as taking five people and not putting them in a group at all because not putting them in a group is implying that they remain in their original group of five. So 5c0 equals 5c5. <laughs> now, if you don't like any, and those are all like the the real explanations. I'm not handing you a line of crap. <laughs> There's also a factorial button in your calculator. The calculator seems to think zero factorial is equal to one. <laughs> this time it's right though. All right, so in your math probability menu, you have all those, well, probability things, but you have all those permutations and combinations. We only live in the world of factorials here, so it's not too crazy, but option four. And generally, if you can't find something, you can look in the catalog. It's probably there. Better be there. So if I plug in a zero for n, I'm just left with an e to the 10th power. So then I need, and that's a non-zero term, so that's good. So I'm not wasting my time. The second one would be I'm plugging in a 1, so 5e to the 10th over 1, so 5e to the 10th times x minus 2, plus 
Then I plug in a 2. So 25e to the 10th over 2 factorial, which is the same as 2, times x minus 2 to the 2nd. Plug in a 3, 5 to the 3rd power is 125. So 125e to the 10th over 6, yes, 6 because it's 3 factorial, x minus 2 to the 3rd, and then the last one, oh, yeah, it is, almost, I was looking for the, the fourth derivative for some reason, so yeah, that would be a Taylor series that would approximate this function centered around c equals two. All right, so you could you could pop this in, you could pop this in, and you can see that just like the other one, some parts of oh, I can't scroll, some parts of it will match up very nicely, and some parts of it won't. All right, and the ones that don't, you need to uh, do something else with. That's something else would be adding more terms to your series, but maybe it's just make a little notation at the bottom of the whatever report you're working on saying, hey, this only works for negative 0.5 to 0.5. Right. So anyway, three special McLaurin series that you have to know. They're they're so important. We're centering centering it around zero. Right. You build it off of the Taylor series, but again, specifically for c equals zero, because that's the McLaurin case. All right. So for e to the x, it's kind of asked and answered. We sort of did it already, but we want to define the entire series. All right. So we do know that the derivative, the nth derivative of e to the x is going to be e to the x. We're not looking for any particular term of the series, so we want it in, in, in a, the most general form. So that's that summation that's written above. All right. So specifically at the c value equal to zero. So what I want is the nth derivative at c, and that's going to be, oh, c equals zero, sorry, which is e to the zero, which is equal to one. All right. So in terms of work, I mean, it's a less complicated version of this one. All right. So we build up our solution. top part is going to be 1 no matter what. The bottom part is going to be n factorial. We're defining c as 0 because it's Maclaurin. So x to the nth power. All right. So then, you know, you can list out terms of the, se the series as needed. You can go from there, but that would be the McLaurin series for the exponential e. The benefit of this, and, and the, the follow-up is not, we're not going to worry about that, but the benefit of something like this is that we have derivative and antiderivative rules for Taylor series and McLaurin series. So if we have something that represents a particular model, then we can actually differentiate this rather than differentiating that. All right. So, and, and you'll see, you'll see in a few minutes. For sine of x, again, we don't really need. Oh, I have not That's that light. It's so weird. Highlighting the light. Well, 
we'll get into like domains in a little bit. Derive a series for the sine of x. I'm just doing the same thing. So I need my n derivative. So that's that part's going to be a little bit of an issue. Okay, but let's let's just start off with the first derivative. So I have f of x is equal to the sine of x. F prime of x is equal to the cosine of x. Double prime. Negative sine of x. Triple prime. Uh, yeah, part of the f. Yeah, okay. So just making sure I have the right number of tick marks there. Uh, negative cosine of x and the fourth derivative. Finally, at long last, we get back to the sine of x. Alright, so you have to go four derivatives to complete the cycle. But, we're, we're writing a Maclaurin series here. So what I'm eventually going to need is the nth derivative at zero. Alright, so the issue here is I don't know what the n derivative would be because I can't get out the n derivative because it's a repeating pattern. All right, but what I can do is evaluate numerically what the derivatives would become. So f of 0 is 0. f prime of 0 would be 1. Double prime of 0. 0, triple prime of 0, negative 1, fourth derivative at 0, 0. I'm going to go a couple more. Fifth. And zero. I'm just repeating the pattern. All right, so I got back to the start here. So then it's going down a step. So seventh derivative, negative one, and then so on. All right, so what I want to do is it's kind of the opposite of what I was doing before. I don't want to just pop it right into the model. I want to kind of explore a little bit first. All right, I think I might even have it. Let me just see something. I don't know. I was hoping I had the Taylor polynomial copied and pasted. All right, well, let me just, just so I can point at it. That circle's going to bother me. All right, so this is our model. And again, just filling in the blanks. So f of c, that part's going to be 0. Our first derivative gave us a 1, so we could do something with that. So this part here gave us 1 times x minus c. Our second derivative gave us a 0. Our third derivative is not present in the form, but if we kind of follow the trend, we'd be looking at the third derivative at c, so negative 1 over 3 factorial times x minus c, but again, the c value is 0, so I'll just write, I'll just change that to x minus 0. Cubed. Then, if I were to continue, I would have a, you know, 
I have to make the same kind of inferences where, all right, I did the original function that zeroed out. My first derivative I kept, second derivative zeroed out, third derivative I kept, fourth derivative, if I'm following the trend, is probably going to zero out. All right. And more than probably, it's right there. The fifth derivative will become a positive one on top, i factorial, then x minus the zero. We want to continue writing the zeros. I don't have to, obviously. What? No, I said if you want to continue writing the zeros. All right. And so at this point, hopefully, you get a sense of the trend. All right. So what's happening here is I'm looking at only odd numbers. All right. So I still have my x's. Those are fine. Those are easy enough to handle. So I'm looking at a summation that's going to have an x in it. And that x is going to be raised to a power. We're just going to figure out what that power is. So it started off with a 1. Then it went to a 3. And then it went to a 5. Now, if we could figure out a relation that represents the power, then I'll also know what the relation is related to the factorial. Now, my signage, it's alternating because I'm going from positive to negative back to positive. We can assume that that's going to continue. So I'm looking at some expression that's going to represent the alternating nature of it. So negative 1 to some power. All right. So a lot of a lot of building has to happen here. Okay, so what I need is an algebraic expression that involves an n, because I typically you know, when we write it anyway, we want to use n. I don't have the calculator like I. So n that's gonna allow my exponent to be odd always. You could do that. But we want we want simple algebra. So if I have a number n and I want it to be even, what would I have to do to that number? N? Squaring it, yeah, but that that's going to fly with sledgehammer. <laughs> what kind of numbers are always even? The numbers that are multiples of two. Okay, so if I take any number and double it, I get an even number. Yeah. All right. How many units are an even number away from an odd number in all cases? One. one. Okay. If I take one step away from an even number, I always get to an odd number. All right. So if I want to represent an even number, just take whatever my n is and double it. In this case, I want an odd number. So I'm going to take one step away from 2n in either direction, so plus or minus. That's going to be a preference piece. You decide, do I want to work with a minus or a plus? So you got to build the rest of your, your series around that. All right? So let's say I want an n plus 1. Just personal preference. Where possible, I prefer to work with positive numbers. Okay, so 2n minus 1, I, I don't want to deal with that for whatever reason. It doesn't matter. Okay, I don't really have a good reason. I'm just choosing 2n plus 1. Okay, my denominator needs to be consistent with that. So it would be 2n plus 1 factorial. All right, so then now that I've guaranteed that I'm dealing with an odd exponent, I need to guarantee that that odd exponent is going to give me the alternating sign. Right? So the question, or at least any exponent related to the n, will give me the alternating sign. So first, let me just make sure that whatever value I choose for my index on the bottom, n equals, you can, you can start anywhere you want because it doesn't matter where it starts, it matters where it stops. It needs to go out to infinity. So if I plug in a 0, Will that give me a 1 in both cases? Or 
the green? The answer is yes. If I plug in a zero here, I get a one. If I plug in a zero here, I get a one. Right? I need that to be a one. I need that to be a one. Right? If I plug in, so I, wa I want to make sure that I get the next step in the sequence if I increase n. So if it makes it to two, what do I have? Does that give me a three? I'm oh, sorry, I said two, I said three. Uh, do I get a three? Yeah. If I plug in a two, do I get a five? Yeah. And so we've selected good values for our exponent and our factorial. Now, I need to guarantee that I'm starting off with a positive. So what should I raise the negative 1 to? The nth power. Right? Because anything to the 0th power is a positive 1. When I go one step down the line, it becomes negative 1, then back to positive, back to negative. Right? So what I've done here... Assuming I go out to infinity, is I've created a Maclaurin series that is expressive of the sine function. Right? Now you can list out you know, a few terms and put it in your calculator and test it and then go from there. Right? Now, this, the four part, we're talking about domain. So where, where would this exist? Well, it would exist everywhere a sine function exists. So for all x. All right, because if I can get infinitely many terms in my sequence, then I, I'll have something that will map directly to the sine function for all values of x. All right. So then the cosine one, it, it follows the same general model, except we're starting with the cosine and building out from there. Right? So we kind of sort of cut to the chase a little bit on this one, because <clears throat> I need, I have my f of x is cosine of x, but I need it at zero, so that's going to give me a one. Regardless of the derivative, you know, whether it's positive or negative, if it involves a sign, it's going to become a zero. So, my first derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, at zero, negative sine of zero is zero, because the sine of zero is zero. Alright, the second derivative would be negative cosine so we're looking at a negative one. All right, so the long story short, it follows the same pattern. Just, it starts at a different place. All right, so zero. Then back to one. All right, so if we're, if we're following that, that Taylor model, again, with C equals zero, we can write you know, just again, the first few terms of it, just so you get a good sense of what's going on before you develop your actual series. Right? So, f of 0 is a 1. Then, your f prime is going to go to 0. So, we go to our f double prime. So, I need these ones. All right. So, plus a negative 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus 1 over 4 factorial x to the 4th and so on. Alright, so it looks like we're dealing with even powers of x, which is good news. Especially today because we already talked about it, what it means. We have alternating signs, so negative 1 to some power. I want even powers of x. So my even power, I'm just going to use a 2n.
Okay. Just double check that you have a good index to start with. I, I put in zero just out of habit. Just got to make sure it works. All right. Also, I need the top to be positive. So I'm going to raise that to the nth power, just like we did in the previous one, because our first entry should be positive to start with. Anything to the zeroth power is one, so that's actually positive. So I put in a zero up here. I get a positive one. One, one divided by one and one, and this goes to one. And it gives me the one that I need here. The next step would be to plug in a one. So I plug in a one, I get a negative, two factorial, x to the second. So it seems to follow the pattern that we're looking for it to follow. Okay, it's the same deal for all x.